welcome to the second episode of RadScope Virtual Workflow Series. My name is Dr. Ramzan. I'm a consultant radiologist working in NHS. And in this episode, we will characterize a small sub-centimeter hepatic lesion on liver MRI. Before getting into the details, let me give you some background information about this patient. This patient presented an emergency with signs and symptoms of bowel obstruction a while back. And this CT scan was performed on that occasion, which showed dilated small and large bowel loops. And naturally, when both small and large bowel loops are dilated and obstructed, we try to find the transition point in the colon. And in elderly patients, the first concern is always malignancy. So you can see the dilated sigmoid colon. And if you follow it down in this part, which is approximately at rectosigmoid junction and upper part of the rectum, there is an irregular short segment structure which is showing clear nodularity and enhancement. So this appearance is highly concerning for malignancy and this is exactly what it turned out to be. This patient underwent emergency laparoscopic loop ileostomy for this tumor as it was causing obstruction. This was followed by appropriate staging scans to evaluate the local extent and distant metastatic spread of the disease. I'll quickly show you the MR rectum that was performed on that occasion. In this module, I would not go into the details of uh, rectal cancer staging because we have a separate playlist that would cover this module. Um, you might have already watched the videos on rectal MR anatomy. I would suggest subscribing to this channel to get notifications about the uh, uh, new content in that playlist. Um, but just to give you a quick review, if you remember, we talked about the uh, sigmoid takeoff. Uh, the sigmoid takeoff is the point where the sigmoid colon moves ventrally away from the uh, sacrum. It is that point. And you can see that there is some intermediate signal soft tissue thickening just below that sigmoid takeoff and it's probably extending partially into it as well. So this is the site of tumor, which is involving the upper rectum as well as the rectosigmoid junction. Now, this tumor appears to extend outside of the rectal wall, extending anteriorly. And do you remember this band-like thickening that we discussed on our rectal MRI anatomy modules? Well, this is peritoneal reflection. And if you remember, we said that in females, the peritoneal reflection is identified just above the cul-de-sac. So where is cul-de-sac? This is uterus. Then this is obviously part of cervix. And this part between the rectum and the cervix, that's where the cul-de-sac is. And you can see a band of thickening just between these two areas. Now, you don't see that typical V-shaped thing here because the tumor has infiltrated this peritoneal reflection. And this would be very nicely seen on the axial images as well. This is the uterus. This is the rectum. And in the upper rectum, this is this whole area with irregular margins and thickening is the tumor. This band-like structure hanging into the pelvis is the peritoneal reflection and you can see that the tumor is clearly infiltrating into this reflection. So this makes it a T4A disease. But we don't see any lymph nodes in the mesorectum, pelvic side wall or elsewhere in the pelvis. There are small lymph nodes along the sigmoid mesentery, along the superior rectal vessels, but these are not suspicious in a sense that First of all, they're quite small. Secondly, they have quite homogeneous signal. And this is another thing that we would cover in our rectal cancer staging module in the um, rectal MRI series. So keep an eye on that. This patient did not have any metastatic disease on the staging CT scan. Given the involvement of the peritoneal reflection, this patient was given um, localized radiotherapy, a short course, and then it was followed by new adjuvant chemotherapy. After that, a follow-up MRI and CT scan was scheduled. Again, we are not going to do rectal tumor response assessment on this module. I'm just trying to give you uh, some background information to facilitate understanding of what we are trying to characterize today. Um, so on MRI, there was actually good response to therapy, but the follow-up CT scan showed something new. What was that? Let's look into it. So on CT scan, you can see that there are several tiny hypodense liver lesions. Let me open the previous imaging side by side. 
So this imaging is the baseline imaging performed during emergency when the patient presented with signs and symptoms of bowel obstruction. And this, the imaging above, is the follow-up imaging. Well, you can appreciate there are several tiny hypodense hepatic fossae in both lobes. Majority of these were all present on the previous imaging. And they were thought to represent tiny hepatic cysts. However, this lesion in segment 4A is new. This was not seen on the previous imaging. And although it's very small, but given its new appearance requires further characterization. We measured it, it was just about 0.6 centimeter. So very difficult to characterize on the CT scan. What we ultimately did was recommend an MRI, which was performed the following week. Let's see how it looked like on the MRI. Well, this is the liver MRI of this patient. Uh, generally, in patients with suspected colorectal metastases, we perform um, a liver MRI with um, hepatobiliary contrast, but for some reason, this was performed with extracellular contrast. Anyways, um, look at the scan now. Um, well, we, I have these T2 weighted imaging on the top, and these are some post contrast imaging studies. Let's look at this lesion on T2 weighted imaging, first of all. And that's where I generally start because um, T2 weighted imaging actually gives a pretty good idea of the internal signals of the lesion. So the lesion was in um, segment 4A and I can open the uh, CT scan as well to exactly localize the lesion. So this is the T2 weighted imaging and let's see if we can find it. Hmm. I mean obviously there are tiny um, low dense uh, tiny intermediate signal and some high signal intensity fossae in both liver lobes but it's very difficult to say with confidence that where that seg segment 4 lesion is well let me share something very interesting with you here do you see any difference between the signal characteristics of some of these tiny hyper intense fossae between the normal t2 and heavy t2 weighted imaging well for instance pick one of the lesions uh, let's say maybe this lesion do you see that I mean, it is hyper intense on T2, but it has significantly increased in its bright signal on heavily T2 weighted imaging. Well, this increase in the signal between these two sequences suggests a fluid nature of the lesion and is um, highly suggestive of simple cyst. So let's try to find our indeterminate segment 4 lesion. Again, it's very difficult to see. I'm not sure where the lesion is. But clearly it did not increase its signal between the T2 and the heavy T2 weighted imaging. Uh, but naturally, we, but definitely we need to look at in the other sequences as well. So what would you pick next? I would go for T1 weighted imaging. This is, I think, the uh, opposed phase imaging. And uh, so these are the in and opposed phase imaging. And let's try to find our lesion here. Well, I think this is that lesion, isn't it? I mean, this is exactly at the location of what we saw on the CT scan. Well, this is reassuring that at least we could find this lesion on MRI, and this would help us localize it on the post-contrast and diffusion weighted imaging. Do you want to correlate it with T2 weighted imaging now to see if we can find it or not? What I would do is I'll put a small cursor here which for some reason I'm not able to see. Anyways, um, so this is almost the same level and uh, we can't see this lesion on T2 at all, which means that it does not have bright signal. And that's an indication that this lesion is probably different from the rest of the small focal hepatic lesions, which are most likely cysts. Okay. So let me get rid of this cross here. And what I would do next is to look at the post-contrast imaging. Well, in this patient who has had a primary rectal cancer involving the upper part of the rectum with clear nodular extension into the peritoneal reflection, the concern for metastatic disease remains. And also we discussed in our rectal MRI um, anatomy module that the tumors that involve the upper part of the rectum, they have greater predilection to metastasize to liver as compared to low rectal tumors, which often metastasize to lungs. And this is because of their different venous drainage. The upper rectum 
uh, the superior rectal vein drains into the portal system as compared to the uh, lower part of the rectum which drains to the systemic circulation. So uh, the point is with a rectal tumor involving peritoneal reflection, we already have high concern that this might be a metastasis, but given its very small size, we cannot call it metastatic unless we have other definite features to suggest it. So, I mean, uh, one thing that we have so far noticed that this, this lesion does not have bright T2 signal. All right, now let's look at the post contrast imaging as well as the uh, diffusion weighted imaging. All right. So this is our pre-contrast scan and we'll just focus on this area in segment 4A. This is the arterial phase imaging and uh, this is the portal venous phase and then delayed phase. Okay, so let's, so let's first of all bring them all at one level and I'll zoom this for you oh, reset okay here you go okay so what do you see here this is the pre-contrast imaging we see the lesion over here and what's happening after the contrast you can see that this lesion has actually become slightly smaller why is that probably has a bit of enhancement in its periphery but again it's too small to be sure isn't it but if you compare it with the rest of the lesions i mean they have quite low signal and the signal has actually become lower than the pre-contrast imaging um, in the arterial phase and this is because the hepatic parenchyma has started to enhance and uh, these lesions because they are non-enhancing they have started to drop their signal but uh, this lesion it remains a little bit of uh, intermediate signal intensity on the venous phase again we don't see any definite difference we do not see any centripetal fill in and on the uh, further five minute delayed imaging again no complete fill in okay so can we now call it a metastatic disease considering it has a it has signal characteristics different from the uh, remaining hepatic lesions which are most likely cysts I don't think so. I mean, this is still quite equivocal, isn't it? And this measures just 0.6 centimeter. The only concerning features we have till now are, first of all, this was a new occurrence compared to the previous CT scan. Uh, and the second thing is this lesion does not have bright signal on T2 weighted imaging. So what next? We will look at the diffusion weighted imaging. If this scan was performed on um, um, with Primovist, which is in hepatobiliary contrast, then we would have looked at the 20 minute phase, uh, which is very good at um, looking at the colorectal metastasis, which appear as completely low signal intensity areas. But unfortunately, this imaging is not performed on that protocol. So we would have to rely on what we have. Okay, let's look at the diffusion weighted imaging now. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, diffusion weighted imaging and this is the ADC map. And what I'm going to do is I'll open the diffusion weighted imaging. Um, here as well. And the reason is I want to show you the difference in the signal of this lesion with different B values. I mean, when you perform diffusion weighted imaging, you would have noticed that the imaging is performed at different B values, which range from very low to very high values. And the lesion is considered to show diffusion restriction if the brightness of the lesion keeps on increasing with high B value. And then we can check, the, we can quantify it on the ADC map. So let's first find out our lesion. So you can see that, I mean, all of these lesions are essentially bright on the diffusion weighted imaging with low B value. Okay, now let's compare it with the scan with um, high B value. So this, these are these images are of high B value. Uh, first of all, let's try to find the lesions that we are not concerned about. Okay, do you see this subcapsular segment eight hepatic lesion, which we thought was a simple cyst? Um, let's see where is it on high B value. Well, we can't see it. We don't see it. The reason is it is not showing diffusion restriction. Let's try to find it on ADC map. Okay, do you see that? I mean, it has bright signal on ADC map, which tells us that this lesion has no diffusion restriction. And the reason it was bright 
on this low B value scan was because of T2 shine through. Now I'm going to have a separate playlist for the assessment of uh, liver where we will discuss in detail about the techniques, the um, process of diffusion weighted imaging and how to interpret um, liver MRI. But um, in this case, I'll just quickly tell you what the T2 shine through is. It's because the diffusion weighted imaging is inherently a T2 weighted imaging. That's why sometimes the T2 characteristics of the lesions start showing up on low B value scans, but on the high B value, this, these T2 characteristics um, go away. That's why the uh, lesion that shows diffusion restriction, that would not be low signal with high B value. So, um, and like I said before, we can quantify this level of restriction on ADC mapping. Okay, so now let's go to our lesion of interest which was this lesion, was it this? No, it was this lesion. Okay, so let's see how it looks like. So you can see that this lesion is actually bright on both low B value and high B value. Now this feature is very concerning because it means that this lesion did not drop its signal with high B value because it restricts fluid, it shows diffusion restriction, which is very concerning. Now we have more than one features to suggest that this is something sinister one was increase in size sorry one was the new appearance on the follow-up ct scan second thing was it's um, um, lack of bright signal on t2 weighted imaging and the third thing which is i guess the most important in this case is diffusion restriction let's look at it on adc map do you see the low signal on adc map so that's what i was talking about that the lesions that show diffusion restriction would be low signal on adc map so combining all these features, I think this segment 4A lesion is highly concerning for a solitary metastatic deposit. And um, after this, this patient would require discussion in the colorectal MDT and probably in the HPB MDT as well. Um, uh, and given this is the solitary site of uh, malignant disease on the follow-up studies in this patient who is already undergoing chemoradiotherapy, we can talk about offering uh, hepatic resection or segmentectomy, uh, but that would be decision on the uh, hepatobiliary MDT. Um, they might also talk about doing a PET CT to see if this is actually the only site of disease. Given this patient had peritoneal infiltration on the baseline imaging, their chances of developing a metastatic disease is high. And there can possibly be some other occult sites of uh, disease elsewhere on this study, which we are not able to find on our routine imaging. And that's where the molecular imaging has its own unique role. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learnings.